There are times in our lives that we stumble on the path, but the Lord always catches us before we fall. William Lee Golden is one of the most recognized personalities in country and gospel music, having earned the highest accolades as the member of the legendary group The Oak Ridge Boys. With 40 million records sold, five Grammy Awards, 10 Dove Awards, and the list goes on and on. In 2011, they were inducted into the Grand Old Opry and the Music Hall of Fame. In 2011, they were inducted into the Grand Old Opry and the Gospel Music Hall of Fame. But during his 40s, William went through profound changes emotionally, spiritually, and physically when he felt four walls closing in. This is his story. This is today's Nashville. This is Faith, part two. William, here we are again. We are. Welcome back to our home, Terry. Well, thank you. You know, the last time we spoke, we ended on you were reunited with the Oak Ridge Boys. But before we go there, I want to take you back, because you were gone for eight years? Yeah. Tell me about those eight years that you were gone from the Oaks. It was a time that I actually got to spend with my family. You know, I traveled over 200 days a year for uh, 22 years with the Oak Ridge Boys at the time. That was in 1987 that uh, I was voted out. You know, with if you look at life, sometimes things that seem bad on one side, they they have a good side on the other side if you look for it. And it was an opportunity for me to spend time with my family, my sons, that I had never had a chance to spend that much time with them as young men. You know, growing up, little boys was one thing, but then How old were it was they a then? time that I was divorced and uh, I was uh, I was a bachelor for a while, and then I remarried, and then. That didn't work out, so sometimes being on the road can be hard on some relationships. And Anyhow, it was a time that I was able to spend with my sons and make music together and to travel together. They were recording songs. I was recording solo albums, and uh, we would travel together and sing songs, and they would play music for me and sing with me and uh, I would applaud from the side of the stage when they were performing. So it was time as young men that I cherished that time that I got to spend with my sons because uh, as a father, you know, you sometimes worry about uh, what kind of a an impact or an influence you might have had or not had with your family, with the kids and and later grandkids, you know, I had grandkids at that time. So uh, it, was a, it was a time to spend to get to know my sons and my sons to know me as a man. I mean, and we worked together, sang together and traveled together. To me, those were the treasured times in my life. It was, uh, it was a time that I still cherish, you know, because it's, it made me appreciate their true talents even more as young men and talented, uh, because they all got different talents. Their mother's family were all real talented. And uh, as I look back on it, that was uh, probably the love and appeal that her family had uh, on me that uh, I enjoyed being with people that we shared the same love for music and singing. But anyhow, my sons grew up in that atmosphere, and they grew, but they grew up as young boys and adolescents with me being gone from home 200 days a year. And uh, so for them to have basically, I have to give their mother credit for 
being a stable part in their life. You know, I love how you honored her in yeah. your book. And I love how God restored that, you know, everything that was lost came back around yeah. during this eight years. It's a great story. You know, I love all my wives that I've had. It's, it's just because of my faults at times. I've had to live with my own misgivings and uh, unfaithfulness to my wives at different times. You know, that's another thing in your book. You took all the, the blame for that. You took it all on you. And a lot yeah. of people don't do that. And you really looked at yourself and said, you know, a, yeah. a lot of it was my fault. It was, most of it was my fault. And uh, I cannot blame any of my faults on my wives or my ex-wives because uh, my faults were not their faults. And, uh, and that's something that I have to live with, you know, because the mothers of my sons are the ones, they're the unsung heroes because they were there for my sons when I was not there. And they raised them in a way that I'm so proud, you know, because my sons have never gotten off into bad trouble. Certainly no more than I did being mischievous and having fun, you know. So, but yeah, it's the mothers are to be given the real credit for what they've done to raise my sons. And uh, I certainly don't want to uh, allow my shortcomings and misgivings to be reflected on my wives or former wives or the mothers of my sons. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll take the blame for whatever mistakes I've made. and. Uh, it's something that I live with and that I will, but I certainly don't blame anyone else for my mistakes. The Lord got a hold of your heart too during this time, didn't he? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, family is an important thing. And uh, my youngest son, Solomon, he lives in Texas with his mother now. And uh, it's a heart wrenching thing to be that far apart and out of touch with your young son that you were so close when he was tender and young and growing up and he's 20 now and will be 21 next month a strained relationship some with uh, mm -hmm. the distance that we have and it's been hard to communicate with him in the way i would love to but you know i think god will take care of that He's done an amazing. I trust that. You know, he's doing amazing things in your life. Yeah, and, he does. You know, with with this eight years, William Golden and the Goldens were yeah. you know, came out, and we're going to talk about that. Okay. When we come right back. Eternally, 
Come and dine, the master's calling, come and dine. You may feast at Jesus' table all the time. He who fed the multitude turned the water into wine. To the hungry calling now, come and dine. Come and dine, the master's calling, come and dine. Come and dine. Feast at Jesus' table all the time. All the time. He who fed the multitude turned the water into wine. To the hungry calling now, come and die. William, tell me about William Lee Golden and the Goldens. It's about me and my sons. They're incredible musicians and singers, songwriters. They have talents in ways that I don't have. And I'm proud of that. And, but uh, during the pandemic, you know, it was years ago after when I was away from the Oak Ridge Boys, we toured and traveled together and I got to know, you know, we spent eight years together. Was this your idea to bring them together? It was, and it was my idea to bring them back together uh, during the pandemic because we were all sent home and told that we're part of the unessential in life and uh, that we had chosen an occupation that was unessential, so we were sent home. After about two or three weeks of being home, watching all the negative hate and violence on television, people hating each other for no reason, everybody hating everybody, uh, I had to turn television off. I would not watch television for probably a especially news and hate and violence. I said, I'm allowing that to invade my home and my person as a person. I turned the television off and I called my sons. I said, uh, I need to play and sing some music. Let's go back to where it all started, what brought us to the game. I took them back to where I came from and asked them to play songs and sing them with me of the old songs that I first started playing when I was a little kid. That my sister taught me these old songs and harmony, harmonizing with these old gospel songs. So we started uh, playing these old songs. Some of them my sons had never heard. But I taught them these old songs, going back to songs that I learned at six and seven and eight years old when I was, my sister taught me to play guitar and she taught me how to sing harmonies. She was three years older than me, but she was the one that had a talent in our family. You know, mm -hmm. she, she could play anything she picked up. She played mandolin, she could play guitar, she played uh, piano and still does, you know, but, uh, Anyhow, she had a great ear for sound and music, you know, because I'd beat my guitar out of tune, playing it so hard. And between songs, she'd go and say, hit the G, and she'd get me to, she'd have to help me tune my guitar between songs on occasion. So, uh, but yeah, that's, uh, I took my sons back to those times of me growing up. And we sang these old gospel songs we sang them right here in this room around this piano. And we did it day after day. Well, my grandkids would come over some days and then I said, hey, let's go up to the studio up here at Ben Isaacs. We called Ben and he, we did it during the pandemic when people were getting COVID here and there. We would, you know, Ben Isaacs had COVID just as we're mm -hmm. getting ready to start. So he missed the first couple of days and then at the end of this recording, uh, one of the musicians was sick the last couple of days, and he, his doctor had told him it was sinus infection, but the day after uh, the rehearsal, he said it was a COVID. So, and then my son, Chris, got COVID at the end of the session. So uh, it was all around us, but we kept singing. We kept harmonizing. We cut 34 songs, so that's what we did in a pandemic, and we recorded all these songs and we videoed everything we did. We brought cameras in there. This is something that I feel like is going to be real special and I wanted to video it all. I had my best friend Jeff Panzer out in LA mm -hmm. to 
to uh, direct the video guys that were there. I got Adam on the phone with Jeff, and I said, uh, I want Jeff to direct all of this, what, uh, what we do here. So he did. We uh, videoed it all, and since then, we've been getting together and uh, here and doing home music videos, getting the guys that did the recording, and we've been all here redoing it and singing and having fun. I saw the video of Take It Easy, Yeah. and it looked like you were having a blast. We did. It was so much fun. I was so happy that day in the session. You know, that's what the sessions do is they, they take you to a happy place in life. Makes you forget about all the hate and negative everywhere else in the world. It's uh, music lifts us up. Music had a healing effect on us. It had a, an effect on our whole family. And music, we went through a healing process. My sons lost their mother just before we started recording uh, to pancreatic cancer. But we went to the studio. We found healing through singing and making music. We found healing mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritual healing. And that's what I was needing was some spiritual healing in a pandemic. And I felt that uh, that's what we all needed as a family. And so it was through music that we sang our way through the pandemic and we captured what we were doing so we could hold on to these Precious. times that we were mm -hmm. together in these moments that we had been shut out everywhere else. But we got together and sang songs that the songwriters and the singers that had impressed us with the original songs with some of these old songs they were very essential in us and life and what inspired us to want to leave home and go sing and make music and be traveling minstrels, so to speak, to uh, share our love for music with other people that might have an appreciation for it. You know, I love how God restores and you were talking about a healing process and you were able to talk to your ex-wife and yeah. I love what she said oh I forgave you a long time ago yeah it was so precious and we're going to talk more about that and how you juggled the Goldens and the Oak Ridge Boys because you have two different groups you're yeah. going out and touring and we're going to talk about that okay. when we come back William, I just love your music. It's just amazing. We sure enjoyed recording what we did. We enjoyed the rehearsals, the singing, and just being together as a family and, uh, and revisiting these old songs that touched our lives through on our way to here. Well, you are very, very busy. You have the Goldens, and then you have the Oak Ridge Boys. How do you juggle it? And, and you were just on the Opry maybe a week ago, I think. Yeah, with my sons. Yes, yes. So it was our first time as a family to be on the Grand Ole Opry. And uh, the Oak Ridge Boys have been members for, what, a few years now, 12 or 14 years. To be on there with my family and my kids. Uh, Chris had been on there with the Oak Ridge Boys when he would play drums with the Oak Ridge Boys, but he... Uh, had never been on there singing on the opera. So what was we that all, like for them? Uh, what was it, it like was, for you? It was great. It was a it was a thrilling experience, you know. We sat here, we'd get together every day and sing the songs that we were going to do on there just, just to make sure that they, when we got there that uh, we didn't get distracted by anything, that everything would come natural and would be second nature to us rather than to get there and something distract you and you get if you're not prepared it'll uh, you know sometimes things can distract you well how do you juggle both groups and touring and family how do you do that i just work every day all day and uh the days i'm not on the road with the oak ridge boys i'm here doing stuff with my kids my grandkids and uh we're playing and doing music or rehearsing 
But I go out with the Oak Ridge boys, I come home and I load up and I go back out with my sons and we go do other shows. Then I come back and repack my bag and get on the bus with the Oak Ridge boys. And uh, that's what we do, it's what I do. And it's what I'm so excited about really, you know, because when you get my age, you realize there's a lot of things that you need to do. And that some of them, if you put it off any longer, you may not get to do it. So. A lot of these things, you know, I was just following my visions that I'd been having about this music with my family. And uh, these visions started about three years ago. It started the year before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And I could never get my kids together at one time. But the pandemic, they sent us all home. And uh, so we were able to do that. The Oaks were sent home. But during the pandemic, the Oak Ridge boys, we started calling each other. We got together. Uh, I was recording with my sons. And then at the end of that week, the next week, I went in the studio with the Oak Ridge boys recording at RCA Studios in Nashville. And we did an album there that week. Uh, did the basic tracking of it and finished it within the next couple of weeks. Then I went it back in the studio with my sons and finished the other two albums. But I had already done one album when I went in back in with the Oak Ridge Boys, and then I finished that album, went, come back in and went back in the studio with Chris and Rusty and Craig and our band, our family band, and kept recording. So uh, it was about 45 songs, I guess, that I recorded during which the one pandemic. Was, which one was your favorite? Which one is the, the closest? Songs? Yeah, which one is the closest to your heart? Well, there's a lot of them, you know. The songs that I've did with my family are all special to us in different ways. I know I recorded these old songs that my mother and my sister used to teach me to sing. It was like uh, some of these old gos gospel songs that uh, I recorded with my sons. One is called. Uh, if I could hear my mother pray again. It's an old country gospel song. That, but songs like uh, Come and Dine, the gospel song that we did that now has had over a million six hundred thousand views on Facebook alone. This is things that old songs that I sang as a little kid in church is what we recorded and these songs helped like I said, it helped in a healing process, mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. So, uh, but then there's other songs like Take It Easy that we did. That was the last song that we actually recorded. But it was a song that I've loved for 50 years now because too. the song was 50 years old. It was released in 50 years older. May. This May was 50 years ago that the Eagles released that as their first single. And it went to like number eight on the charts. Everything else they did reached number one, but that was their first one. It was uh, this past May was 50 years ago that they released it, 72. But since then, man, I've been doing uh, recording and uh, doing shows with my kids, you know, and that's the thing. It's, it's exciting. The Oak Ridge Boys, we're heading out of town tonight. Wait. We're headed to uh, Kansas City tomorrow night. That's an indoor show tomorrow night, but tomorrow, uh, Saturday, we're doing a big fair, a big outdoor show. What's the future for William Lee Golden and the Goldens? Will there be a, an, another recording? Well, we hope that we get to do many more recordings is what we hope to do. But we're going to be recording and singing and playing music here in this room and anywhere else we get an opportunity to play and sing our music, we'll be there. Well, William Lee, I am just so excited for what God is doing in your life. And um, one more thing, what would you say to somebody that has gone through some of these things that you've gone through and God has brought you full circle? As we live life, Sometimes everything don't necessarily evolve around our personal timing. 
God's timing is completely different. And sometimes if we had our ways, things would have been a lot different. But if, we've, if we're patient, and uh, it's not that we don't get, get the things that we were wishing for sometimes, but it's sometimes it's the wrong timing. And when you do get it, you realize if it had happened before, you weren't ready for it then. So uh, I f you trust God's timing more than our own desires and our own uh, wishes. And we've got to trust that God knows a lot more than we do. And so uh, we shouldn't get frustrated or impatient in life. At my age, you realize every day is a gift. It is. And uh, it's up to us to do all that God allows us to do every day. To give Him and glory. And to uh, try to do something that is giving back with our talent rather than being, I never could feel comfortable with being a taker. Well, William, thank you so much. Always a pleasure and a blessing for me to be able to sit well, down. Well, Terry, I hope we get the chance to do this even we, again. We might do it again. <laughs> well, you're always welcome. Well, thank you. Thank you. My friend, has life taken you down a path that you're just not sure? God is a God of restoration. Let him take a hold of your life. He'll turn it around. This is Today's Nashville. This is Faith. Stone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.